what what a great weekend of footy we had. It was oh, it's it's the season that just keeps on giving. But I think at the end of the round, you have to sit back and just say, and then there were ten. That that's it now. So we've lost Port. We've lost Gold Coast. We lost Port. We lost the Gold Coast. A couple of cracking games like Port and Gold Coast. If they had played like that all year, they're, they're still in the hunt, but they, they haven't. That's been the that's been the uh, discussion, hasn't it? I mean, Port have had such a poor start. We said it you know, way back when. Uh. You just don't recover from 0-5. And I know that everyone says, oh, but they won this and they won that and they did this. Bottom line is we've got 10 left. And St Kilda play the Dogs in a fortnight. Now, but, I, was gonna, I know you're big on the Dogs. We'll get to the Dogs later, yeah. but the Dogs are in the 10 at the moment. But, geez, will they stay there? Yeah, well, if that's the biggest game of the year for these two clubs mm. is is in round seven. What are we round round eighteen? Seventeen coming up. Round yeah. eighteen, and they'll play Sydney, uh, the Saints, in the last game of the year. So those two games uh, are, are absolute musts. For and the I think Saints. the Saints I still have think got Freo Saints. this week. Yeah, you like? I like the Saints. I, I think they can. I think they can win a final or two. So that's, I said that a couple of weeks ago, and people said they might not even make the eight. Mm. But if they do, they've got a, they're dangerous. They are, they are dangerous, but their they gap, you know, the old yeah. saying, the gap between the best and the worst is a pretty stark one, isn't it? So when, when we see the best of St Kilda, we see good things happen. When we see the worst, geez. So I think, I, I, we'll get to the dogs later, but I think all nine of those sides I can see winning two finals. Look, I can see St Kilda win too. I can see the Swans doing things that win too. I can see Richmond getting on a roll. Collingwood are playing great footy. Carlton, brutal. Fremantle, Brisbane, Geelong and Melbourne we've talked about all year. Mm. So this is a strange year. Normally you have eight, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You go, oh, yeah, they're going okay, but they're not really near the others. This year, they're all, they're all bouncing around with their form and they've all got different, different assets to yeah. challenge. So it's just unreal. Yep, it kept us guessing right until the last minute did round 16. I love that Fremantle-Port Adelaide game. We'll get to that shortly. But before our first break, do we need to roll out the King's Gambit? What's the King's Gambit? Or do you want to do that after the end? No, I'm going to go with it early. I'll see if you can guess it. There's a new there's a new sir in town. A new sir? A new sir. Knighted. The Ford 50 Freak. I want you to have a think about who it is. And I'll give you the clue. It's sir someone. But... <laughs> You'll, you'll get it when you, you'll get it if you think about it strong enough. He's in a state team, so you might struggle what, with that because you only what, watch you only watch Victorian. Don't do that. What body dimensions are we talking? Uh, he's he's the key num- or small. The, he's he, oh, he's the best forward fifty player in the competition over the last two months of football. Wow! I'm not going to tell you his size or his dimensions. I want you to think about it during the right. break. Uh, please, I'll let that marinate and uh, feel free to text in as well. 0433 98 11 16 on the temper and I'll keep it away from King. Forward 50 freak. Sir, something, something. There you go. Kingy's knighted someone inside the forward 50. Who is it? No, God. Kingy has knighted someone. Uh, well, the Jared King's Healy knighted him, sir, uh, sir, whatever. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Is it? Well, the text came flying in. Sir Shea Bolton. Sir Shay, no, no, Sir Wrong is not not correct. <laughs> Someone said here, Charlie Cameron, you're welcome. Is it Sir Charlie Cameron? Uh, Sir Charlie Cameron, no, not Sir huh. Chad Warner. Concision, what's that? Oh, no. uh, Sir Freddie, who's Sir Freddie? <laughs> It's a Freddy. Well, I'm just reading out the text. Who <laughs> 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 sent that in? <laughs> You're a disgrace. <laughs> oh, I'm just Sir, reading out what they've sent in. Sir Chol? <laughs> Sir Marby or Chol? Question mark. Oh, Miss Jared. Um, <laughs> so, well, the cat's away, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Isaac Rankin is what oh, we're talking about. Of course. Sir Isaac. Isaac. Do you know the last eight weeks he's top five in the competition for score involvement? So just, you just hang, watch. On, ha- hang on, don't gloss over that. For top the last five two in, months. In the AFL. In the comp top yep, five for yep. score involvement. In a team that's probably got a, an oh. attack that wouldn't be ranked in the top four. It'd be ranked five, six, seven. It oh, wouldn't yeah. be in the top bracket. So this this guy alone, what he's doing inside the forward fifty is ridiculous. So he, he doesn't he doesn't play midfield minutes. He doesn't do what Jeremy Cameron does and roll right up the field and play our know, full ground. He he's not a he's not a targeted um, player kicking the ball inside fifty. So so you have to you have to accept that what this guy does is winning his own ball at ground level, 
and is still top five in the competition at impacting the scoreboard. So he's a freak. How was the freak goal? Talent. I know I go to the highlights straight away, but that yeah. volley goal, not many would be willing to try that on to the right of screen, have fresh air from an angle. And yeah. his lateral movement, he's so sharp. He's going to be a handful, isn't he, when he, when he puts it all together completely. But he, he, do, he does all these things with someone right on him. Like he gets the best small defender every week and still does it. So I, I think we're going to embrace this guy. I think he's already the number one son. I said that last night. I think he's already the number one Gold Coast son player. I think he's going to be their most damaging player. And he's going to be the reason that the Suns either make it or, or not in that market because he's so marketable. And soon to re-sign as well. Hasn't done yet, but Jack hasn't Lacocious done hasn't done yet. Jack Lacocious they wanted to get on with first. Isaac Rankin was a little bit more um, complicating, if you like. Um, but in terms of how they value him, but as you've just made clear, um, he's he's ad- he's adding zeros to that contract. So that well, that will happen at Gold Coast. It will happen. Yep. There's no there's no concerns. No, no concerns. So we've got some unique players, haven't we? So it's talking with uh, Sir, Sir Daniel Hoyne this morning. The other Sir. So Jeremy Cameron, the way he does it's a bit different. So he's most of his scoring comes from flowing with the with the flight of play, if you like, or back with the, the run of the footy as a tall half forward flanker type. Then you've got Clayton Oliver who's up there with scoring moments just through sheer brutality. Petrarch is now playing a different role. He's playing now half forward as well as midfield minutes. We saw Dangerfield come back on the weekend. Um and just hit the ground running minute you know, minute one, first 15 seconds of the game. Kicks a goal in the first 10. And he's <laughs> just doing what he's always done. So we just got, we've got very differing um, impactful players at the moment. So I think it's, it's we're in a, no wonder we're loving the season. Yeah. No wonder. Yep. Uh, breaking news out of Instagram from Darcy Moore. And this is the news Collingwood supporters were holding their breath on. Uh, Darcy has posted... Good morning. There is no structural bit of Jerry Whaley about that. Good morning. There is no structural damage to my knee, which is a big yeet yeet. Thank you. Did I do that right? I don't know. Yeet yeet. Big yes, yes. Thank you to everyone for the messages of support. It is truly overwhelming and much appreciated. Also, wow. go Collingwood. So Darcy Moore, I mean you Sure, there's some soreness and some bruising, but no structural damage out of that knee. And that was a horrific looking mechanism, wasn't it? What a result. I mean, what a result for footy. And and, you know, just Pies Pies fans, we we all love watching Darcy Moore play. That that, it's it's sickening vision, isn't it? Don't you hate seeing that that jarring? And they were always, I mean, and they were confident in the aftermath of it. um, But that that mechanism, when you're landing from a height like that and the knees extended, uh, yeah, could have been a lot lot worse. So thankfully. Um, he's okay, and he's going to be back sooner rather than later. Off the text, Grimes on Rankin next weekend, yeah. question mark. This is a big game. Suns, Tigers at uh, at Metricon. Uh, that'll be a great matchup, won't it? Because we know Dylan can play on the tools and also the smalls. Yeah, he, he lo- but this is – so Dylan normally plays on the smalls because they are a marking threat as well. So he gets Charlie Cameron because the ball gets kicked to Charlie Cameron. And he, he, he doesn't get kicked to Isaac. And he blanketed another Charlie going back a couple of weeks, Charlie Curno as well. So, yeah. um, so I think you'd think Daniel Rioli would get the job, wouldn't you? He takes all the clever smalls and he's in sensational. Is he Nick. what? Oh, my God. He's having a career year. running the goal yesterday. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> that whole play, and I know you showed it on first crack, that is Richmond 101, isn't oh. it? And that's why they've still got the best system with ball in hand in the comp. And there was no Prestia. There was no Cochin. Um, no Bolter. No Bolter. They lost Dusty after half time. Gee, wasn't he looking ominous at the, at the main break? Yeah, he was kicking <laughs> the ball yesterday. Yeah, his power, his speed, his kicking. It's a shame because he was just starting to get it back, I reckon. So we saw Dusty for, what, a quarter of the game. Mm. What would it be, 35 minutes? We saw Patrick Dangerfield for 60% of the game. He played 60% of the game on the weekend. 19 touches, six clearances, eight inside 50s and a goal. Like it was just, it was. hey, listen, just go and just tune yourself up a little bit. Um, it's so good to see the Stars back. Five, five playing a different role has caused a bit of tension over in the mm, West. He's not a fan of the questioning, is he, the coach, Justin Longmuir? I get the feeling he might have to get used to it, though, as the season goes on. Really? Well, he's a big player in that five. People want to know where he's playing, how he's playing, how he's feeling. It's a big story over how, there. How do you get the best out of a out of a Hall of Fame level star, right? So, so someone of, of of five status in the game. How do you challenge that player that when you put him in the middle, he goes gangbusters? I, I can see him holding him back for like three or four weeks. Does he just not need time? Then, but, but then when so I think the the superstars always think they're ready. 
They don't think they need time. Mm. But they, they just, hey, mate, I'm playing. Mm. I play in the middle. That's where I play, right? So I, I think he's holding him back on purpose. So when he puts him in there, he'll 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 just he'll go into full beast mode. Off the text, Kingy Hagel was dusty. He's game forty four percent game time, seventeen touches, one goal, one assist, eight score involvements, and ninety two super coach or ninety two uh, champion data ranking points as well. So, well, he's he's kicked the ball a bit, little bit average the previous few weeks. That's that's what I've been watching to see if he's still got that. Yeah, we all we all know he wants to break tackles and those sorts of things, but his his leg has had been a bit off. But he lasered two on the weekend. He he did one. He did a kick. In traffic with his left foot, they call. They didn't pay the fifteen meter. Uh, they didn't pay the mark. But how he did it, I'll never know. And I thought he, he's he's back. He's got that feel and that understanding of space and how much time he's got. So now I'm, I'm just disappointed for Dusty that he's out for a couple. The big issue, though, King, has to be the Brisbane Lions forward Eric Hipwood, who was up before the tribunal after making uh, well after causing Ryan Gardner to make contact with uh, an unsuspecting field umpire in Jacob Mollison. You've been pretty strong on this. You think he should be suspended? Well, I think this action needs to be suspended. Now, do you do you get this first case? Maybe not. Maybe there's a fine. Maybe he gets off. But I think you have to alter the the rule book after that. So you are saying he deliberately sees Gardner, sees Mollison, deliberately shoves Gardner into Mollison, sees the umpire and sees him with his back turned, sees him all of 60 kilos and says, oh, I'm going to shove this player into this umpire. Is yeah, I don't think he works it out for the previous 15 metres, but I just think in that last step before the umpire, he says, well, I know what I can do here. I'm going to take them both out. I can, go, I can go. Boom. And maybe Gardner leans in. I'm not sure. But well, it was does. sold to me as if it was a push lead by Nick Rewalt the other night. I don't, I don't see this as being a push lead. I think that it's incredibly coincidental. If the time you decide to push lead is the moment the umpire's right there, I, I can't accept that. Now, Luke Hodge, we love him, SEN's very own, has started, uh, well, continue the propaganda machine out of the Gabba with oh. some behind the goals vision, if he, you don't mind, he, on Instagram last has night. He, has, he put the, has he put the Brisbane Lions watermark on it yet or not? <laughs> that's, that's right. I think it was blurred out in the bottom right hand corner. Exclusive Lions but TV. He does say, you, you make up your own mind, and you mention it, but Ryan Gardner definitely does change his angle and runs directly into Eric Wood. They can't not collide, right? So Eric Hipwood and Ryan Gardner collide. They have to. Hipwood's the stronger. Gardner goes flying. Now, I think it's a long bow to draw that he deliberately shoves him into the umpire. I think he shoves him. But does he try to shove him to the other side of the umpire to create that split, given Ryan Gardner's clearly trying to make it inside? That's why he changes his angle, to try and make it inside the umpire to take the short, shortest way home. Or does he just shove him because there's no choice for him to shove him and the umpire contact's accidental? We will we'll find a way to get him off. That's that that I do oh, know. Oh, you're coming I've, at it from that. Eh? That I've learned. Oh, really, I've learned over the last three. This is why we're still talking about stomach punches. With with this, I think it's going to be difficult for them to prove categorically that Eric Hipwood meant to shove Ryan Gardner into Jacob Mollison. That's going to be that's going to be a, a, a big bow to draw. To be honest, I, I'm willing to give the player the benefit of the doubt. Some are not, and Kingy's in that basket as well. But Kingy, just before we pick it up, uh, David in Newport's texts are a real big issue for us to get our teeth into. Is there a chance of Kingy getting first crack at the Fox footy wardrobe once in a while? (laughs) Gary Lyon gets his choice of lounge suit and smoking jacket every week. Sarah Jones could have her own label. A Kingy, well, he's been recycling the same three Palaco business shirts (laughs) since his playing days. A string tie, a roll neck. He needs sprucing up. No, I'm I'm, I'm a swim between the flags operator. What? It's just very basic. Get out the rip. No, I don't need it. That's not why we're there. I'm happy for those guys to spend the salary cap on the clothing and I'll just drift in with a little white shirt or a little blue shirt. That's the only decision I have to make. Colin had a measured take when it comes to Eric Hipwood. Uh, I'm sure he deliberately pushed him to put the umpire between them both and to open up space, not necessarily to hit the umpire, but maybe we don't want this in the game either way. That's my point. If you want to take that risk... So we suspend him for that? If you want to stamp something out... You need to. You can't whack people with a little one thousand dollar fine. What's the fair? What's a fair suspension then? I'm well. You're going to see this. You're going to see this grow if you don't. If you don't take a stance on this, we will have this conversation within the next twelve months. That's all I'll say. Well, how often is this at? This is. I, I can't recall an, an incident like this. Mm-hmm. Okay. How often does it happen then? Is this going to be? Well, if it doesn't happen, to say often, it's going to set a precedent. How often does it? Will you tell me how often does it happen? Once every five years. This. Yeah. I can't. 
Couldn't tell you. Okay. So Safe what, to say it's not a regular so event. So if I said let's give it three weeks, if someone decides to do it, give it three weeks, because it only happens once every five years, would it worry you? Well, there is a rule written in place. And as we said before the news with Anna, it's unreasonable or unnecessary contact. And that's a fixed financial sanction, and we see that quite often. Now, the AFL chose to look at this differently, hence he's gone to the tribunal. Now, for matters referred directly to the tribunal, that they are classifying them as intentional contact with an umpire. So I, I, clearly, um, Chris O, Michael Christian, is saying that there's scope to, to label this intentional, but, which is why it's been referred directly. This is from. normally around stoppages. Yeah. It's normally around give way yep. to the umpire while he's back. Not 100 metres off this the This is ball. not yep. two guys running flat out that are six foot five, looking to make a lead, looking to get separation on their defender and using the umpire as a battering ram so they can keep going. Mm. This, is a t- this is a whole new ball game, this one. So I disagree with the, the sanction. It's written in there because of stoppages where the players aren't really moving at speed. That's true. But yep. the umpires are 60 kilo. Yep. They, they can't absorb these sort of hits. We're, try- we're in an era where we're struggling to get umpires. No, I'm, with you there. No, I'm, with, I'm with you there. I'm just saying... I'm not sure it's deliberate. Anyway, we'll, we'll agree to, to disagree. Where do you sit with the pressure index? Who sits in that? Well, the pressure index right now, well, there's, there's a few, isn't there? There's, there's, there's a few. But I, I think that in terms of pressure, I, I think the Western Bulldogs are under more pressure than anyone right now with their game, with their actual game. So I had a look at them on the weekend and, and, and I watched the, the Brisbane Lions – Walk the ball down the ground more often than not, and I think, gee, that's this is very this is very easy. Yeah. Um, and then and then you, you don't really see it till you see it. So I thought, oh, I'll just have a look at how how often they actually intercept the opposition uh, as they move the ball down the ground. They're second last in the competition this year. Kangaroos are, are the only team that are poorer than the dogs at winning the ball back off the opposition. And you think, okay, all right, that, that can happen. Then maybe maybe they're, maybe they're not set up. Properly. So I look down back and I say, okay, Alex Keith, he was brought to the dogs to be an interceptor. Not happening. Tim O'Brien, Tim O'Brien gets caught in no man's land more than any other player I've seen. He's he's nor on the player nor in a position where he can win it back. He just gets leapfrogged consistently. So I'm looking at. The, and then you say, okay, well, so Norton's forward. Norton's kicked forty goals for the year. He's top five in the Coleman. So they're probably reluctant to move him. Because he's he's been such a, a weapon, but if he if he was at halfback, what would he do? Given that sixty more than sixty percent of your scoring comes from intercepts, mm. and given that you at some point need to stop the opposition from playing, from having their own way with you, do they need to look at Bruce going back when he, when he comes back from the Rico? Do they need to look at an opportunity for Jamara? Do they need to look at? Um, Darcy when he comes in starting as a centre half back. I know he's played defence in the um, in the reserves mm. or in the Scooby Doo's. Um, I think they need drastic change. And then you go a bit further, okay? So then you go and have a look at all right. Well, they're not great forward of the ball. They're not great behind the ball, but their midfield's outstanding. So I'm looking on the weekend, and Brisbane just played them to it. Played them perfectly. Let them win some. Not let them, but they competed inside. But if they lost, it didn't matter because they had. Great structure behind the ball with Harris Andrews dropping off as often as he could. So in terms of clearance efficiency against Melbourne, Brisbane, Geelong and Carlton, so the best teams in the comp, Melbourne, Brisbane, Geelong, Carlton, they score 29 points from clearance. They come out, their clearance efficiency is about 70%. Don't get too concerned with that. But against everyone else, they score 45 points. So there's a three-goal gap mm. between playing against the best and, and, and the rest. The, and numbers against the rest mean nothing when you get to the pointy end. So I think this is why they're struggling because their their brand or their their mode of football, where whichever way you look at it, is not working. So they're not winning the ball back, and even when they play against the best, they're not getting through at stoppage. Yep. So their whole gear, their whole system is geared around these mids. So is it good for them individually, or is it good for them as a team? I think right now you'd have to say it's good for them individually. They've won a lot of games of footy over the last few years, but we're talking about twenty twenty two. So. I, I think there's a there's an off season of change at the dogs. They need to have a look at the whole mechanics of how they play. I'm not saying no one's saying anything about coaching or anything like that. This is just this is just a system that is broken. Brisbane, twenty eight scoring shots from fifty entries. Yeah. So that's an extraordinary high efficiency rating, isn't it? And they just picked them apart on the way back through. Kitty Coleman, I'm a big fan. I'm number one ticket holder of the Kitty Coleman fan club. But just hey. before you leave the dogs, every team has one intercept defender. The good teams have two. 
They don't have any. Well, you mentioned Jamara, so a text just landed. Do you think Luke Beveridge could play Eugle Hagen at centre back for the remainder of the season? His field kicking looked good on the weekend, would be a great intercept marker, and he could help fast track his development for the dogs. Who sent that through? Uh, no name. No text. name. That's 116. Good very text. Good. Well, well done. I, lo- I love these sort of suggestions. And, you know, Jamara looks, he's, he's improving every, every minute he plays. He's, he's looking better and better. But, you know, would it hurt him for six weeks to go back and, and just learn the craft down back? I, I don't think it would. Maybe you might. They've got so many tools. Next yeah. year, they're going to have to service. And we hear Rory Lobb's coming in as well. Now, where's, where's Rory going to play? He's going to play forward ruck, isn't he? I'm not sure Rory's the right fit, to be honest. I, as I said earlier, I mean, they're going to have um, Norton. They're going to have Bruce is going to get back. They've got Darcy. They've got Eugle Hagen. Um, I'll be looking at the other end. But um, but anyway, they might need some some ruck backup as as well, depending on where Sam, where's Sam Darcy actually at. Is he... Is he Playing some good footy in the VFL. Yeah, Drop us a, yeah. yeah. 0433 if you've been watching Sam Darcy. I saw one game at the Witten Oval where he absolutely slayed them. Just wondering if he strung a few together consistently. What about North Melbourne before we leave the pressure index? Because Jeff Walsh's first game as part of his month-long review was a 112-point drubbing. Uh, I listened to Joe, Joey Montagna last night on first crack. Um, what he described as mixed messaging from the coach from halftime to post-match. And about controlling the footy and then later saying he was wanting his players to, to take territory more and they didn't adjust. But the raw numbers, eight inside fifties in the second half. Eight entries in an hour of footy. Yeah. It's yeah, it's hard to it's hard to argue numbers, isn't it? It's a bad day to have the human guillotine sit at the back of the box and say, Well, what are you trying to set up here? How's yeah. it going? <clears throat> at the end of the day, the, the rebuild coach doesn't survive. I, I've been big on this forever. Um, you know, percentage sits at 49.5. So you're basically getting your score doubled by the opposition week yeah, on week. We don't look at that enough. That's a, an alarming 49.5. percentage. Yeah, that's an uncompetitive. So the, the average losing margins, 10.5 goals across the last 13 matches. A big sample size. So GWS's first year, they had a percentage of 46.2. Mm. And we knew the stocks that were there, so we gave them some grace. Gold Coast first year. 56.3. That That's 7% higher than the Kangaroos right now at 49.5. So I don't, I don't know how you talk your way through this one. I don't. I, I feel for David Noble because I think he's been dealt some bad cards um, and maybe he hasn't, played, he hasn't played them very well either. What about, while well, we're speaking of forwards going back, what about Benny Mackay forward? So what was it, seven touches and a goal the last fortnight. He's had Cameron and Hawkins at the other end. It was Taylor Walker the week before that, what did you think of that move, and was it strange? Didn't like it last week. So I keep saying, Angus Brayshaw says last two weeks ago yeah. in the post match to us, it's about mastering your role. Ben Mackay has played forty five games of AFL footy at fullback. Has he mastered fullback? Is he is he a, a guy you can just throw on Tom Hawkins and say that job's done? Has he got the tools in his kit? Has he mastered yeah. the craft of fullback because he's only played forty four games there? I'd say I'd say no, I'd say no. So I, my my objective would be to make Ben Mackay as close to the all Australian product as you can, and that that that's he's not a full forward. Can we just agree that he's not a full forward? And then say, oh, but you know his brother's a very good full forward. Maybe mm. he can do things like his brother. I think we sort of knew that. Even when he got opportunity against Adelaide, which was a strange game to do it against Adelaide, because of all the games they were possibly a chance to win against Adelaide in Tasmania, bring in a debutante, mm, it's a risk, and throw your best prime defender to full forward. Mm. And then you get beaten by two guys who kick 10 between them. So you're thinking this week, okay, Hawkins. It's a logical match up there. Josh Walker versus Hawkins. Just, just, just put your prime fullback where he's going to play his best football. It's too much too much trickery. Errol's in Aspendale. Errol, thanks for calling in. I was, um, I've been a card-carrying Western Bulldog supporter for uh, 67 years. Um, but I've got to say, I'm just getting so disillusioned. I look at that squad and think, how many players are there that other coaches <laughs> would like to have in their team? So why aren't they winning games? has to be game plan. For years, I've been thinking this responsibility of two-way running on the on the midfield. It's, what's he trying to kill them? Mm. Um, uh, I think. What are they looking at Rory Lobb for? Where's the defenders? Please get us some defenders mm. uh, and get some other system. Another thing I don't understand is when they're kicking the ball long 
uh, into the forward line, there's always a, a great nest of players there. They've got so many forwards. They're quite good. Why aren't they scattering and leading out? Why are we always kicking to this enormous contest? Yeah, love it. Love the passion, yep. and, and, let, and I agree with most of what you're saying. Yeah, hundred percent. When it comes to down back, they let Louis Louis Young to go to Carlton. It, it just looks a little bit silly now in hindsight, with not being a hindsight hero. But there's a guy who's uh, had a pretty good year at Carlton who could be handy. And Sam Darcy, J Dog, just quickly off the text watches What's Joe watches the dogs as closely as anyone, Kingy. He says, Sam Darcy, very likely to play this week and replace uh, Tim O'Brien down back. Has played well in the ruck the past two weeks, ruck. but was playing fullback prior to this. Yeah. He, he's a contested marking beast. Some of his under-18 vision is just spectacular. Yep. But but can you – I don't know. Can you expect a you know, relative no, no. youngster, you know, first gamer to come in and be an intercept freak? No. Look, I, I think you've got to give the dogs a chance. Get get one of the areas right. Get, you know, I, I just think behind the ball is a, a logical starting point. Let's brighten it up a bit. Yes. Uh, the best bits. Have you got a best bit for Hang me on. for round 16? I've got one for you while yep. you're going through your notes. Hawago Oya. Oh, yes. First game, first goal. The scenes back home in PNG, Port Moresby, unbelievable. Uh, the family gathered around, the friends gathered around the small screen there in the living room. What a magnificent moment that was, the running banana. Loved it. The running banana. Loved it. Well, it's just, I love the uh, the excitement of, of the two debutants. And Stewie Jew takes a risk, doesn't he? Playing yep. the two debutants. I just... I thought, oh, it's, you know, this is a game they they have to win, bringing in a couple of youngsters like that. But they were very good. Uh, I, that was that was a belter of a game. Oh, gee, they'd be ruining that result. Oh, well, full credit to Collingwood because yep. they just they just keep challenging Corridor. They play their brand of football, and I love the way Craig McRae speaks. I love the, I love his language. I love how he, how he's he challenges players but supports them in the same phrase. It, it, it's just brilliant, and and I think there's no. No alibis, no excuses, no no emotional. Um, you know, oh, sorry, coach, I was feeling like this. Oh, I did, and I don't want to hear about what you were feeling. What were your actions? It's all about what your actions were. And yeah, I just think it's a great brand of football. They're playing defence first, and then go go go. Yep. The Dacos boys were just out of out of this world. Um, but I'm, I'm a little bit with you. I'm disappointed the Suns didn't win because I I would have liked them to still be charging towards the finals. Um, but they've made some, some big inroads. Can I throw one up? Yes. The best? <clears throat> Name me a tougher trio that have started I in the centre I already know where you're going. I yeah, already I know. know where you're going. <clears throat> Name me a tougher trio. I can't. Well, v- historically, I'm Viney, sure. Viney, we... Oliver, Petrarca. At the moment, the Bash Brothers. They're the, back. The D3. A trio of tough. I need a name for them. It was so t- temper text. Give us give us some thoughts on what we can name the three Melbourne mids that are tougher than Teak. I haven't seen a starting trio harder. I can't remember who it was. There was a moment in the game that wasn't <clears> even in play. It was a recall bounce, but Viney charged through before the bounce had been recalled and just flattened someone. <laughs> yeah, they and they then somersaulted. And the, the ball had to be rebounded. So I can't remember who the Crows player was. Yeah. Someone will let us know. But um, It was a small ball. It might have been Saligo, I think. Oh, it was fantastic. So I, I, I think most teams across the journey have had two. Two really seriously tough contested possession wins, but not many have had three. We know Carlton are playing with a level of brutality this year, but these guys are uh, something else. And Petraka finished too at the weekend, which he hadn't been doing. So when he adds that layer to his game in front of the sticks. Well, that was a change. That's he, the reminder. He played 70 30, 70 He's sort of playing mid. between the lines, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's playing a little bit more, a little bit more forward. So I, I just. This new role. So that was the highest rated game he's ever had in the weekend. Ever had. 32 rating points. So if you get above, if you can hold 15 rating points for the year, you're almost all Australian. So individual games can fluctuate, but he had a he had a 32 rated game. So he kicked three goals, kicked the lights out of the footy, one contested footy, lots of inside 50s, lots of score involvements. He, he was a, the total package on the weekend. And I just wonder whether they say, given they've seen it for two weeks now, it's a new role against Brisbane, and they had a look at it. And obviously they've done it again against the Crows. I think that'll be his split, given that Harms has stepped up, um, Sparrow's getting better, uh, Jordan's getting better on a wing. They've got that, that next level of player are slowly getting better, so look out. Some of the names for our hardened midfield trio at Melbourne. The Krusty Demons came through, King. I didn't mind that one. I don't mind the unholy trinity. <laughs> Demolishes. Demolishes is a good one. 
What about Frankie, uh, the titanium trident? The titanium trident. It's a long one. Don't mind handy up in Mildura. Snap, crackle, pop. <laughs> and in terms of reference points for harder midfields or comparable uh, harder trios, yeah. uh, the Cats got a few nominations. Uh, Jody in Yarra Junction threw up Selwood, Bartell, Corey, Chappie in there sometimes. Brent Maloney, one. Sam Blees and Kale Morton. <laughs> Yeah, no, you just now you're taking the there. now you're taking the. Not going to get it done. <laughs> okay, they're the best bits. What about the worst bits? I ask you, have you ever had a finger that looked like Darcy no. <laughs> We well, tend to, you'd, that was unbelievable. If you t- if you get handball receives, you tend to be okay with the digits. <laughs> well, it looked like he got it caught in Jake Lever's jumper. Did, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a strange one, wasn't it? Because it was his other hand. Yeah, yeah. looked like it got caught in the jersey in the, the jumper in the Guernsey. Wow, fingers. No. So um, is, is, that's uh, a compound fracture, yeah? It was. So is and he weeks? came back and played on. Is that weeks? Well, he played the game. I know. I don't um, know how they do it. A, a shout out too for Aaron Hall. I mentioned him earlier, but the earliest Medi sub of 2022, seven minutes he lasted. He was devastated on the bench. He had a hammy in round five that kept him out until round 13. Only been back for a couple of weeks and he goes down with that. Is, isn't it funny? Like 12 months ago, he was he was – one of the most disliked kangaroo players in the history of kangaroo recruits. And then all of a sudden he's found form and now he's almost their most important defender. Yep. His ball use is sublime and he's he he kicked those three short kicks in a row and that was it. He did, it wasn't a driving 60-metre no. pass. It was just one of those Cursed. funny mechanics. But uh, You got a worse bit? Goal kicking. Oh. Like what's happened to goal kicking, really? I mean, we saw that Port Adelaide finish last night. I mean, Boston. Cost Carlton, it, it cost just, Sydney, cost Gold Coast. Yeah, Sydney, um, big time. Yep. yep. Sydney, well, they kicked one goal eight or something in the third quarter. Yep. might have been two goals eight. I mean, that game should have been over. Carl, what happened to Charlie Kerner on the weekend? He's been flashing them all year. One goal six in the third quarter, I think it was, for the he, Blues. He finished with one four, I think. Harry didn't make the distance a couple of times. Yep. And that, that banana. I don't, yeah. know about, I don't know about the <laughs> round the body. Uh, this is where we... Check with Horny on the uh, numbers on those. <laughs> Um, what about the debate? We've got time to talk about the debate before we get into the newsroom. Really quickly, right? Do we need do we need the AFL to come up with and this is not about the kangaroos at all, okay? But do we need to so have it, so it is. Do we need to have see this is where I like talking with Jared, not so much yourself. <laughs> the priority pick discussion Big annoys precious. me because we do it every every oh, five you've years. Gone there. Why don't we have something that's set in stone as to when you qualify? For a priority pick or not. Because that's when tanking occurs. Not if when you, there's definitive criteria, you, that yeah. is when tanking well, occurs. That, that's one form. That is written in stone. That, no, the, the previous model um, enhanced tanking. As soon as you put a win-loss on it over a period of time. What do you have to have a win-loss on it? Why well, what other have, criteria are there? Couldn't you have bottom four in the comp? Couldn't you have... Well, same, same thing. What? Same thing cut up differently. It's still a set you criteria still that you can manipulate a result to suit. Do you honestly think that the the teams that are like the kangaroos are manipulating results? No. No, I don't. But what I'm saying is when you put a criteria, a hard and fast criteria in that says if you meet this criteria, you definitively get an extra first round pick, then history would say that's when questions and integrity come into play. So should you have to apply for a priority pick? Ah, well, yes. I think that's the process at the moment. That the clubs have to put in a request to ask for a priority pick. Should, should North Melbourne do that? Should they? Uh, they probably already have. So one win this year, four wins last year, twenty twenty three wins, twenty nineteen was okay. That was the ten twelve season. So in the last one, two, two and a half seasons, they've won eight games. Mm. Yeah, there's no tanking there. No, no, I'm not saying there is though. Don't, don't. I'm not saying no, there I'm, is. Uh, and even if, if, if you talk wine for and people who say, months. "Oh, it's a result of their own doing," well, that's always the case as well. Yeah. No club deliberately gets themselves into this Quarters, into this position. Quarters tweeted that on Saturday night a bit. Oh, late. every club, every club. Melbourne, when we were talking priority picks, every club that's ever had one. Collie were going back. They they are the product of their own demise. So how how long should we allow? Or do we, do we just say that's your lot? And I'm happy with that. If 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 the AFL say, no, we're not giving out a priority pick. This is this is your lot. You've basically got to be down the bottom for eight to ten years. If that's the case, then that's fine. But let, let, let's just put it off the table. Mm. Do you think they'll get a priority pick at the end of the year? I don't know. I, don't, I, I can't answer that. I'm not sure I'm torn, to be honest. 